Well, hey friends, thanks for joining me. My name is Brett. I'm a pastor on staff at City Light Lincoln. And if you're watching this video, it means that you're interested in pursuing membership at City Light Lincoln. And I'm so excited for you. And I'm so happy that you don't just wanna attend City Light Church, you wanna be City Light Church. Today in this video, we're gonna cover a few topics surrounding membership, including why church membership exists, what is the church, who church membership is for, what a member commits to the church, and what our church leaders commit to our members. So stay tuned to hear more. So the first thing we're gonna look at is why does church membership exist? Some of you may be thinking, I don't see a church membership process prescribed in the Bible. And you would be absolutely right. The Bible doesn't give us a clear membership process. It's really important for you to know before we move forward that you don't have to be a church member to be loved by Jesus. You don't have to be a church member to be a follower of Jesus. You don't have to be a church member to attend City Light Lincoln Church and to get plugged into our family. But I would argue that church membership is instrumental for you as you decide to continue to grow and develop in your relationship with Jesus. And I'd also argue that church membership is instrumental in guarding the purity and the legitimacy of the capital C church, those who have believed and followed Jesus throughout all times and places. So we're gonna see that we have a membership process for two reasons. The first reason is affirmation. We live in a culture with a variety of churches and denominations with all kinds of different views on what it means to belong to the body of Christ. But through membership here at City Light Lincoln, you are able to clearly affirm that you believe and stand behind the teaching of City Light Church, the way we understand and teach the Bible, and the way we lead and organize our church, among other things. Likewise, in an age of diverse thoughts, practices, and beliefs, the membership process allows our church leadership to affirm you. Through the membership process, we're able to get to know you, to hear your story, and to affirm if you're truly a follower of Jesus. We get to affirm if your beliefs and values line up with our church family in such a way that we could say with confidence, yes, this person is a member of City Light Lincoln Church. Finally, the membership process is meant to affirm to the outside world what a true Jesus-following family should look like. The name of Jesus is maligned far too often by people who confess to know him, but in reality have no relationship with him. When the outside world looks in on our church and wants to know what it looks like to follow Jesus, our church members are the first people that we should point to. In an age where confusion around spiritual things is prevalent, the church membership process is meant to bring clarity, encouragement, and affirmation to you, to our church leaders, and to the outside world. The second reason why church membership exists is for oversight. The Apostle Paul says this to the elders in Ephesus in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. The question that we as pastors and elders have to ask is this. Who has the Holy Spirit made us overseers of? Can we truly pay careful attention to everyone who walks through our church doors on Sunday morning? The membership process allows our church leaders to know who specifically we're called to oversee. We obviously want every person who walks through our doors on Sunday morning to feel loved and shepherded and cared for, but the membership process helps us very practically to understand and prioritize who specifically we are called first and foremost to spiritually oversee. So in summary, the membership process exists to provide affirmation and oversight to our church and its members. The next question that we need to ask as we continue to learn more about membership is what is the church? The word for church in the New Testament is the Greek word ekklesia, which literally means a gathering of people who have been called out. The church exists because Jesus has called people out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Jesus always calls people into a gathering of other called out ones, into a family of people who have also been bought by the blood of Jesus. 
The true church is not, therefore, simply the people who show up to a gathering on Sunday mornings, because people who show up on Sunday mornings may or may not have been called out by Jesus into his kingdom. The true church, then, is the believers, the ones who have been called out, rescued, redeemed, and are being transformed by Jesus. The church isn't a building. It's not merely a group of people who gather together for an hour and a half, once or twice a week. The church is a people. They don't do church. They are the church. Church members, then, are those individuals that the pastors and elders can affirm with some measure of confidence are truly the called out ones among them. The Bible describes the church in several different ways. The church is the body of Christ. The church is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The church is a flock of which Jesus is the chief shepherd. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is a kingdom of priests. And the church is a city set on a hill meant to shine for the rest of the world to see. We believe here at City Light Lincoln that we see these realities played out as we live out our mission and our values. Our mission at City Light Lincoln Church is that we exist to glorify God by multiplying Jesus-centered disciples and churches of all nations. And our values are down, up, in, and out. Down, really simply, stands for the message that Jesus came down to save us. It's the good news of the gospel. Up is that we grow up to look more like Jesus, maturing in our faith and walking in holiness. In is that we engage in community, knowing that we were meant to live in relationship with other believers. Out is that we reach out to carry out the mission that Jesus gave us to make disciples of all nations and be witnesses to him in our neighborhoods, in our city, and to the ends of the earth. And we believe that our mission and our values will be carried out primarily as we gather on Sunday mornings and as we scatter throughout the week in city groups. We gather on Sundays to hear the word preached, to worship together through song, and to take the Lord's Supper, that is communion, and celebrate baptisms. We scatter throughout the week in city groups to live in community with one another, reminding each other of the gospel, encouraging and holding one another accountable to grow in our walk with Jesus, and meeting one another's physical needs. We pursue mission together to reach our neighborhoods, our families, our workplaces, and the world with the good news of Jesus. The next question we need to ask is who should be a member? In its most simple form, church membership is for those who have been called out by Jesus from spiritual death to spiritual life, are being transformed by Jesus, and are committed to seeing his kingdom advance through his church, specifically for us through the local body of believers here at City Light Lincoln Church. And there are two things that I'd ask you to consider before you say yes to church membership. If you can say yes to these two things, then we believe that membership is a great step forward for you. The first question you need to ask is, do you believe? In other words, have you been called out by Jesus? Have you been transferred by Jesus from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light? Do you confess with the Apostle Paul in Romans 3, 23 through 24, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus? Can you also confess with the Apostle Paul in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but that the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus? Do you believe that you deserve eternal wrath and punishment for your sin, but that Jesus took the wrath that you deserve in your place on the cross and rose again three days later from the grave so that you too could have new life? And can you say with Paul in Galatians 2.20 now that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and that the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and loved me. In other words, has the love and grace that Jesus has shown you changed your heart and transformed your life? 
And have you made a public profession of your faith in Jesus through baptism? Over and over again in the Bible, we see that those who profess faith in Jesus are baptized as an outward sign of an inward reality that they've been redeemed and transformed by Jesus. Because we see this example given so much in the Bible, we require that all of our members be baptized or at least make plans to be baptized in the near future. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, do I believe? The next question that we need to ask ourselves is, are you bought in? It's important to know what we're not saying right now. We're not saying that membership is for people who are perfect or who are, ba- or who are batting 1,000 in their walk with Jesus. Membership is not about creating an exclusive club of super Christians or creating a, an internal hierarchy within our church family. When we talk about being bought in, what we're really asking is this. Do you align with the mission, vision, values, and leadership of City Light Lincoln. There are plenty of great churches in our city who preach the Bible and have good community and good leadership. But is City Light Lincoln Church the family that God is calling you to give your time, your energy, your focus, and your resources to? That's not to say that our church or any other church is perfect. We'll always have shortcomings, we'll always have things that we need to grow in, but even with the shortcomings considered, is this truly the church family that you want to invest in to see the kingdom of God advance in our city and around the world? If not, we'd encourage you to consider pursuing membership at a church that you can be bought in, that you can be sold out for the mission, the vision, and the values of. If you can't say yes to the question of, do I believe or am I bought in, or you just have questions about them, I'd encourage you to wait and talk to a pastor before you pursue membership. The next thing we need to ask is what does a member commit to the church? And I'm gonna move through this section a little bit more quickly because you're gonna address each one of these commitments in more detail in your membership interview. The first thing that you commit to as a member is to abide in Jesus. In John 15, five, Jesus says, Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As church members, we're committing ourselves to holiness. We have to commit ourselves to looking more and more like Jesus by abiding in him daily. And the call here isn't to be perfect. In 1 John 1.8, the Apostle John says that if anyone says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. See, the call here isn't to perfection, but to progress. It's to a daily abiding in Jesus. And as a church member, you agree to abide in Jesus and to seek to be transformed, to look more like him day by day. And there's a reality here that I need to address. There may come a time when a member of our church willfully walks away from Jesus, either by a concrete decision and proclamation with their mouth or by a consistent pattern of decisions that they've made with their lifestyle. In other words, they've made a conscious decision to no longer abide in Jesus and instead to willingly pursue sin. And in this case, our church pastors and elders would lovingly need to confront that person and call them to repent, to turn back to Jesus. In extreme measures, if someone was unwilling to turn back to Jesus, we would no longer consider this person to be a member of our church. It's important to understand that this process is a last resort. It's a very serious thing. We've never had to do this in our church family, and we pray that we never will. But it's a reality as church members that we need to understand. The next thing that we commit to as a church member is to engage in the gathered and scattered church. That is to engage with our church on Sunday morning and to engage with our church in city group throughout the week. Church is more than a Sunday morning gathering. We want to get together on Sunday, but also scatter throughout the week in city groups. Remember, we don't do church. We are the church. And a big way that we get to live out the reality of being the church is to gather with other believers throughout the week in city groups where we can see real relationships form and real mission carried out. The next commitment that we make as church members is to submit to trustworthy church leadership. Hebrews 13, 17 says this, 
It says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they're keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. The hope here is that you would be able to commit yourselves to our church leadership, knowing that we don't take our roles lightly, knowing that ultimately when we stand before God, we'll have to give an account for the way that we loved and shepherded and cared for our church members. We want our church members to know that we don't take our roles lightly, that we make all of our big decisions in plurality with a multiplicity of pastors and elders as a way to pursue wisdom and to safeguard us from walking in untrustworthiness. The next commitment that we make as members is to steward our time, talents, finances, and spiritual gifts. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, Peter writes this, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God sur- supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Really simply, as a church member, you're agreeing to steward your resources to see God's kingdom advance through our church family. Lastly, as church members, you commit to engage to see every tribe, tongue, and nation reached with the good news of Jesus. In Acts 1.8, after Jesus has risen from the grave, he speaks some final words to his disciples, and he says this. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What we're not saying is that if you're a member of City Light Church, you're committing to hop on a plane and move across the world. But what we are saying is that you're committed to playing a role and seeing people who have never heard the good news of Jesus to have an opportunity to hear it and to become disciples of Jesus. And that may mean that you hop in a plane and you move across the world, but it at least means in the, that the ways that you can, you are going to commit yourself to seeing the good news get out to every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. The last thing that we're going to look at is what we as church leaders commit to our members. Again, I'm going to go through these a little quickly, knowing that in your membership interview, we're going to hit each one of these more in detail. But there's three things that we commit to our church members. The first is to know you. Acts 20 verse 28 says, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. We don't want you to just be a name on our membership role. We want to actually grow to know you. And that's why if you decide to pursue membership, we want to commit to sit down with you, to hear your story, and to talk with you a little bit more about membership. We want to commit to following up with you, to check in on you, to see how we can be praying for you. So that's the first thing that we commit to, is to know you. The second thing we commit to is to feed you. In Titus chapter 2 verse 1, it says, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. We commit to feed you from the Word of God. That means that we commit to keep the Bible central to everything we do on Sunday mornings and in city groups. So that's the second thing that we commit to, is to feed you. The last thing that we commit to as church leaders to our members is to lead you. This is what 1 Peter chapter 5 says. It says, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. Know that as pastors and elders, we're committed to lead you with integrity, to choose the path of servant leadership. We believe that Jesus' example of washing his disciples' feet is the same type of leadership that we're called to take. We're committed to lead you and know that we will have to give an account for the way that we've shepherded our church members. So those are the three things that we commit to as your church leaders. We commit to know you, to feed you, and to lead you. Well, friends, I hope through this video that you feel more equipped and prepared to pursue membership. If you'd like to continue in the membership process, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, fill out the membership 
application. That should have been already emailed to you. If not, feel free to reach out so that we can send that membership application to you. In it, it's just our way of getting to know you a little bit better and to have you express in written form your commitment, your desire to pursue membership. After you fill out that application, you'll receive an email or a text from a pastor or an elder who will set up with you a membership interview to continue the process, to continue to get to know you. Again, friends, thanks so much for joining us. I'm so excited for you, and I'm happy that you don't just want to attend City Light Church, you want to be City Light Church. Thanks for tuning in.